throughout the world. And peace be unto you. as salam alaykum. We're very thankful to Allah, highly glorified as he for once again allowing us to respond to the call for Jimmah. And that's a call that is directed to the believer and it is a testament of our faith. You know, it, it, when you look at the verse in Quran, it clearly highlights the importance of Jimmah. It begins with O oh, you who believe. And then the verse goes on about as we hear the call that we leave off all business and traffic. Whatever <laughs> our concerns are, this is a greater concern. So this is very important for you to understand that when you make the response to the call and make what appears to be the sacrifice, there's greater coming to you. So we leave off the concerns of progression, business, whatever we engaged in to advance our lives. When we leave that off, Allah says that blessings come. So that's the benefit of responding to whatever directive Allah gives us, there's reward. So I know when I respond to the call and I leave my business life, I'm leaving money on the seat. As a barber, when I respond to that call, I'm leaving money in the chair. But I understand it's more beneficial to me to leave the money in the chair and respond to the call knowing that all the good we do, Allah is going to bless us. So responding to the call is really a reflection of your level of faith. Some people just don't see it important enough to leave off their faith. I'm talking about those who can do it. Some just say it next time, not today. But he said that when the call is given, that you hasten to the remembrance of Allah, and then you leave off all your business and traffic. And then when the prayer is finished, then he said you go back into your avenues of production. So you come to Jumar to be restored. So you leave off your affairs, you come to Juma for your spirit to be fed. So that when you go back to those avenues of production, you go back with an ideal of excellence. That's what you're working toward. You're working towards excellence. So when you come to Juma, you don't come to get beat down, you come to be lifted up. So when you go back to whatever you engaged in, you do as Muhammad the Prophet, peace be upon him, said that you seek excellence in your endeavor. He said that when, believe, when a believer endeavor task, they seek excellence. They seek to do their best. So when you come and you hear the word of God, it does something for your mind, it does something for your spirit, it does something for your soul, then when you go back to whatever your affairs may be, you should go with a renewed spirit. And then when you go back into that avenue of production, he's going to reward you for leaving it off for that particular amount of time. <laughs> So we're always thankful to Allah to be able to respond to the call, understanding what this process that we engage in is going to do for our soul. So we can grow, we can progress, and then we're equipped enough to make our contribution to life. There's a very interesting verse in the Quran where Allah tells us about who he is. He says that he is the originator of the heavens and the earth. He's Al-Fatih, Semiwati Wala'ad, that he is the originator of the heavens and the earth. Why is that so important? That is important because we live in an environment where you see so much unnatural living. He says he creates originality in his, in his true form, in the nature of something. And then when it's natural, 
it supports your life. And when it comes out of that natural form, it's adverse and now it's going to be problematic. So he makes it clear to us that he is the originator. And then once man begins to work to attempt to alter the original nature of anything, then that creation begins to work against him. Because that creation best supports his life when it's in its natural form. So he said that he is advocate, he is the originator. The creation is in its original form. And all you have to do is look at food. Food has taught us over the years. You know, you talk about mad cow disease. Food. You talk about vegetation. Plant life. They've showed us what happens when you tamper with the original nature of a thing. They have many of those animals eating meat, contaminated food, poison. When those animals begin to eat that, then that, what they ate became a part of them, and then human beings began to consume that food that was in an unnatural form. They started to shoot the food up with hormones to make them grow fast so they sell quick. And now that food is in an unnatural form because there's some additives. And then when you and I ingest and internalize that food in an unnatural form, then health challenges, illness become a part of your life because now you're eating something outside of its original form. So he said that he is Alpha Tier. He is the originator. Then you have those mad scientists, mad scientists, who then go work to try to alter the biology of a human being. When the law makes it very clear that the male is not like the female, he makes it very distinct that the male has his role, the female has her role, and they are clear for the development of life. So then the mad scientist goes and says, I want to alter this being and turn this man into a woman. He's a mad scientist. He's manipulating, he's working to take something out of its original form. And now you have a reflection of not just a, a physical alteration, but now you have a psychological alteration. And then that goes in the world and then it begins to reproduce itself. I mean, this thing is big, not only in America, but throughout the world trying to alter the nature that Allah gave him. He said that he is Alpha Tier, he is the originator. And he makes, when he makes it in his original state, it has a valuable role. When you take it out of that role, out of that state, it can function to its highest capacity. Because when it's in an unnatural form, then it's working against life. And that's why all those who go into trying to work in, to live uh, what they call an alternative lifestyle. See, they, turn it, they make it an alternative. Here's an alternative. God says he created man and woman. And then the mad scientists say we want to create another being and it's an alternative lifestyle. There's something better than what the originator gave. I don't, I don't like that. I want, I want, I want an alternative to he said he's the creator. And then when something comes out of this original form, it becomes problematic to society. And then people wonder why there's so much discrimination against those who are trying to go against the natural progression of life. There's discrimination because that's not normal. And human beings just don't respond to that very well because they know that nature tells them God says, and, he, and the male is not like the female. <clears throat> and then when a human being work to be other than what God created them, it disturbs the soul of that natural being. So that natural man, that natural woman has a problem with that. Because they understand 
that shaitan is working to alter what God has already created. And when shaitan is working on something, it's going to affect you. Because shaitan is the enemy to man. When I talk to you about the fool, and this is a big one, because whatever you internalize, it shapes your life. It don't just shape your physical, it shapes your thinking. It shapes your emotion. Food is powerful. Food is so powerful, Allah says, oh man, eat of the good and lawful things of the earth and follow not the footsteps of the devil, for he is a clear enemy to you. Now look how in this verse Allah is showing you that you eat something in this natural state. This good, this taib and halal, what, what, what is lawful and is good for your development. It's not just lawful, it's not just permissible, it's not that it's not poor, but it's also good for you. It's not contaminated. It hasn't been injected with steroids. So that a steroids become a part of your body and you wonder why you're sick. You wonder why you're putting on so much weight. You wonder why you're sluggish. You wonder why little baby girls are, are, are growing too fast, too big. Because that's what steroids do. Steroids make you expand fast. That's why we saw many of our brothers who are into bodybuilding. And they took steroids, and then the steroids caused them major problems biologically. So he says, here's the verse, he talks about food, but when he talks about food, also in the verse he starts talking about the devil, because the devil works to you through your food. All these additives. All these different colors dies in the food. And people wonder why their thinking becomes slow. I'm talking about young people. Why their thinking becomes slow? Because they're ingesting, they're internalizing more than just what they see. That's why there's artificial flavor and artificial color. See, anything artificial, it's not in original state. He said that he is the originator of the heavens and earth. I mean, of everything. Everything in the heavens, everything in the earth. He's the originator. And when it's nat in his natural form, it's best for you. So he tells us clearly about the nature. And we call the nature, or the nature is, the natural state is the fitter. I want you to remember that word, the fitter. From the same word of fitir, the fitra, here's the nature of the human being. And when that nature is free to operate, it brings so much to the world. But when that nature is, it is manipulated and it is contaminated and it becomes toxic, then it works against the natural progression of human life. So we have to be clear about listening to what Allah gives us because Allah gives us a very disciplined life. He says in the Quran that it is he who named you Muslim both before and in this revelation. You may have that Muhammad teaches us that, teaches us that Muslim is the major discipline for maintaining and advance in human life. It's the major discipline. So you can't grow. You can't prosper. You're not able to get the maximum benefit from your nature if you don't have a disciplined life. A disciplined life is necessary for progression. A disciplined night life is necessary to ward off the influence of the shaitan. Shaitan realized that he's in a battle with a person who has discipline. A person who has discipline is less likely 
to become a slave. I'm not talking about the physical chain and shadow slave. I'm talking about the psychological, the emotional, the spiritual slave. The economic slave. The person who experiences the greatest amount of debt, no discipline. Because shaitan works through them, through all of the marketing strategies that compels you to just buy. Just shop. That's why I tell you before, if you ever go to a mall, there's no windows. And there's no windows in the mall because they've already designed the mall in such a way that you lose touch with what time it is. You lose touch with the real world. Because if you saw a clock or you saw a window, you say, oh, it's, 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 it's 7 o'clock. I've been here since, uh, since 2. So the mall has already been designed for you to lose touch with time. There's no clocks on the walls, and there's no windows. It's not accidental. So Shaitan already understands that the one who has the least amount of discipline is the most vulnerable for his scheme. And this is why Allah gives us clearly this ideal of understanding what it means to follow order. The Ramadan is approaching us. That's one of the greatest lessons that we get in the month of Ramadan. The one, one of the greatest lessons we get in the month of Ramadan is to be in a position to follow order. To have structure. You don't fast when you want to fast. You don't fast how, how you want to fast. You fast by following the discipline that's already been laid out. And when you follow the discipline that's already been laid out, that discipline supports your life. It is designed to equip you to be able to go in the world and take your rightful position. Because the person who is not able to follow order, the person who is not able to have a life that's regulated by discipline, they're open prey to shaitan. And that's why Allah says fasting is prescribed to you as it was prescribed to those before you okay. that right. you may develop taqwa. And in having this consciousness, that's what taqwa is, and having this consciousness, within that consciousness is a, an awareness of control over your own life. That if you don't have the control over your life, then you're vulnerable. So when he says, and he named you Muslim, that's more than just, I'm submitting. He named you Muslim understanding, or you and I understanding, that this Muslim, this ideal of Muslim is powerful. He has a life that is influenced not just by peace, but by discipline. You can't be a Muslim submitting your will to the will of Allah and you lack discipline. That is the governing principle in the life of not just the Muslim, but the believing Muslim. I was talking to Brother Shah. I said, not just, not, just a, not just a Muslim, but a believing Muslim. Because the verse in the Quran talks about just say you submit for a man has not entered into your heart. It's not enough just to say I'm a, I'm a Muslim, but what is the level of belief in the context of what it means to be a submitting being rendering your will to the will of Allah? So he says that he's Alpha Tear. Alpha Tear is the one who from the very beginning, create this original form. It's not an assembly line. It's original. There's no additive. Here's the human being. He creates the human being. Then he says that he shapes that being. 
And that human being is in a position to realize that everything he does in the context of what we call Dean out of fiction. See, now he's the way that's consistent with the nature. I gave you a minute ago the fitra, the, the original nature of the human being. So now, Dean al fitra is the way that is consistent, that supports the natural progression of the human being. Because when things begin to operate outside of its original form, it's problematic to the world. That's why I gave you the verse about food. It's very important for us to understand this. And I just can reflect 20 to 30 years. I can reflect on the, the nature of food. And I study how food is changed without even reading the verse where Allah talks about halal wa that the food is in its natural form. And then I began to look at people I knew. And I began to see how their eating habits begin to affect their health. And when their eating habits begin to affect their health, it begins to affect the quality of their life. And I look around now and I see people my age, young, 40, 50 years old, major health challenges. Because they have been consuming food in the unnatural form. You look at America, and you look at food, and you go to the grocery store, and you see so much unnatural food, and then you wonder why there's so many hospitals being built every day. I remember a time when I would look at television and I very seldom ever saw a hospital being advertised on television. Never saw it before. You turn on the television, you turn on the radio, nothing but ads about how we can treat your illness. And we have to ask ourselves, how did that happen? But when you understand the food industry, you understand how those who work the food industry work to make people addicted to food. So much that they have all these uh, uh, being institute. Uh, like, not just um, people want to lose weight, but they got to have support system because they just can't find a way to get a grip over their urge to eat. So glutton, glut, they become glutton. Don't understand that they're, they're, they're swelling their bodies up. And oftentimes they're swelling their bodies up with major toxins. See, this is part of the salvation message of Al Islam. That you have to be conscious of what you consume. Because it has been said many, many years ago that you are what you what eat. Because what you eat becomes part of the cells in your body. And what you eat becomes who you are. So Allah said that he says, O oh man, eat of the lawful and good things of the earth. And follow not the footsteps of the devil. For he is a clear enemy to you. Shaitan is working through food. I want you to understand. If you get nothing from this cook bar, realize that Shaitan is working through your food. And you should do your best to think about your future, to think about what you're eating, because what you're eating will determine how you live and how you feel. And I try to say this to young people real early. Because oftentimes, many people are not taught about the quality of food and how that food is going to shape your life. How that food might determine how many aches and pains you experience as you go through your life. Because shaitan is working through food. And the law shows us during Ramadan, you got power over food. That there's only so much you need to function. We just eat because we can. Person sit there and 
Can't move. I don't, don't want to eat the way I can't move. That's why we talked about Muslim men. You got the discipline to control your passion. You have the discipline to control your appetite. So he shows us clearly that through food, this remember the words halal watai, lawful and good for you. Now I said from, from the beginning, it may be lawful, it may not be pork. That's halal. It went through the process. But is it taib? Is it good for you? Does it have major coverage? That has major attitude. That I told you will begin to affect how you think will slow, will have the capacity to slow down your thinking. You remember how you ate, you feel sluggish? Because most of us <coughs> eat a whole lot of dead food. If you read the Quran, Allah talks about highly vegetation and fruit. Now, most of us don't eat enough fruit and vegetables. I'm telling you what the Quran does. The Quran talks about food that you should be consuming that's going to give you the energy and the vitality you need to work in your place. So you have the vibrancy. You have the life. You have the energy to go out there and face the challenges you will face every single day. So we're Muslim. We have to understand what are we eating? Because when it's taken out of this original form, it's going to have an adverse effect on your whole system. Yes, So, he is the Al-Fatir, he is the originator. Let me give you a few verses that Allah talks about the disciplined life, or he talks about the believer. In one verse he says, and when I reveal to the disciples saying, Believe in me and my messenger. They say, we believe and bear witness that we submit. He says, and when he revealed or when he inspired to the disciple. When you hear the word disciple, you hear the word discipline. Because the disciple is one who is following the instructions given to them by their leader, by their teacher. So he says, and when he inspired to the disciples saying, believe in me and my messenger. Wasn't enough just to say that you were the disciple. Wasn't enough, just enough to say that you believe that you are, had enough discipline, but now are you believing in God and his messenger? Because when we believe in Allah and his messenger, he said there's nothing but rewards. Here's another verse. And Allah has promised to those who believe and do good that he will surely make them rulers in the earth as he made those before them rulers. See what that means? You're here to believe it now. How you going to rule and you have discipline? Allah says, once you come to that level of belief, now your life is a reflection of discipline. And because you have the discipline, he said that he will make you a ruler in the earth. You can't be a ruler if you don't have governing over yourself. The ruler has control over him or herself. And he said that if you believe in him, he'll make you a ruler. In other words, 
That's the process. He's always making rulers. He said, as he made rulers of those who came before you. He's always in the business of making rulers. And the ruler has discipline over self. And if you don't have discipline over self, then you're vulnerable for the schemes of the devil. And all you got to do is look in society. Drugs, alcohol, high levels of violence. And you'll see high level of violence as ignorance is reproducing themselves. That you see people, how can it happen? That they see one person slashes a woman into the chain reaction of ignorant people begin to follow that one starting point and the ignorance begin to reproduce itself. And that's why we as conscious people have to wage a war against ignorance. If we don't wage war against ignorance, that ignorance will reproduce itself and it eventually will affect your lifestyle. Ignorance is reproducing itself. But when you start talking about Jahalia, not just their ignorance of knowledge, but they're ignorant of the guidance of Allah. And when you're ignorant of the guidance of Allah, you're vulnerable for anything. When you're ignorant of the guidance of the law, you will have the mad scientist that we talk about. The mad scientist, because he's ignorant of the guidance of the law, thinks that he can go and alter the original nature that the law created. You can never do it. I don't care how much you begin to go to work on it, you can never change it. Because he said that he is Aleph Atir. He is the original. You can't change the original nature of anything no matter how hard you work to try to do it. But he said, those who believe, he has promised to those who believe and do good that he will surely make them rulers in earth as he made those before the rule. Here's the promise of Allah to you. The promise of Allah to you is that he said he will make you a Khalifa fil Ard. He will make you a ruler in the earth. That's his promise. Because you cannot serve Allah properly if you don't have a discipline in life. You just can't do it. That's why from the very, very premise when you declare your faith, when you say, La illaha illallah, that's discipline. Because from the very premise, you're being taught how to fundamentally reject anything that will put you in bondage. From the very premise, when you say lie, you said no. When you do that, you experience freedom. When you're not able to say no, you're weak. When people start talking about pressure, peer pressure, I'm not talking about little kids. Peer pressure, not little kids. When you feel compelled because somebody else do something, you're not free. From the very premise, Allah teaches us how to say lie. Illa illallah. There's no force, there's no power, there's no being, there's nothing in existence that is more worthy of your loyalty and bondage other than Allah. Your loyalty and your devotion other than Allah, there's nothing in existence. So from the very premise, Allah says, La ilaha illallah. That is the most powerful message you can deliver to any human being. And when they make that declaration from the very premise, it's so powerful that the Prophet Muhammad, peace upon him, said that all our past sins are forgiven and a new life comes into existence by merely saying, lie, that's how powerful no is. Illaha illallah. Wa shaddu anna Muhammad and Rasulullah. That Muhammad is the one that shows me how to be a human being. Because that's what the world needs to be taught. The world needs to be taught, how do you be a human being? 
What does it mean to be human? That the human being must be caring. The human being must have concern. Empathy they feel with another being. In order to function effectively as a human being, you must have forgiveness in your being. You must use your mental capacity. You must understand your emotional power. This is what it means to be a human being. That you can think and strategize. This is what it means to be a human being. And when we lack that care, when we lack that concern, and we lack intellectual power, we go on to bondage. Because when you lack those things, you lack spiritual power, shaitan is coming to see you. So you look around society, you see the insensitivities. I told you ignorance reproduces itself. And they go cut another person, cut another person, cut another person. That's ignorance reproducing itself because they have been reduced to, they have been reduced from what it means to be a human being. They've been reduced. Human beings don't do that. Because human beings feel. Human beings care. You slash women in their face, what's wrong with you? That's what you call sickness. And that's what we find reproducing itself all through America and throughout the world because they don't have the discipline. They, they, they've been shown to even Bomb, master, don't have discipline. That's what a verse says, see? Say you submit because Iman, real faith, is not entered into your heart. It's all right to say you submit, I'm a Muslim, but has the Iman taken root? See, the Iman puts you on a whole other level. That's why I say he's going to reward the believer. In fact, he said that the believer will be victorious. Qad aflaha mu'minun. Qad aflaha mu'minun. That the believer will be victorious. The believer will win. That's God's promise to you. And all throughout the Quran, he talks about the believer. That's a whole different level. The Muslim is the elementary level. That's the, that's the first base of establishment. But then you got to grow up. You have to grow up from the submission to the conviction. That you have the conviction, I'm convicted to this. I'm locked into it. That's why they call a person a convict. They're locked into that system. You know what a convict is? A convict is the one who's locked into a system and he can't come out. And when you understand what Al-Islam is, you put yourself in this world because you understand this is the best way for your life. You're like a convict. You don't want out. You don't even want out. Because you've already saw that there's nothing better than it. I don't want out of this. I take this to the end. The verse says that, and die not except in a state of Alice. I don't want out of this. I want in. In fact, I want to get deeper into it. That's what conviction is. So you move from submission to conviction. And we move from submission to conviction, we're moving to greater degrees of freedom. Peace be unto you. I so like to become a son.